Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about rear time lighting. In my previous video I have covered bake lighting, which does look good, but if you ever seen a torch or a bonfire or even a simple candle in your life, there's one problem with it, flickering. And that's something we can do with bake lighting. We will need to use rear time lighting to dynamically change the intensity over time. Let's get started. So first we need to talk about the different types of lighting directional light, point light, spotlight and area light. We can quickly reduce it to 3 because Unity doesn't support real-time area light at the time of this recording. So directional light, it basically functions as the sun. The position of this object doesn't matter, it will lit every object in our scene from the same direction, only its rotation matters. Point light, it's straightforward, it gives you a point like source and lit the objects in a radius in all directions. Spotlight is similar, it has a point where it starts but it only lit objects in a cone like shape. It's often used for flashlights or street lamp lights. Okay, next we need to discuss shadows. To do that I prepared a simple scene for it to demonstrate the light settings. So start with the shadow resolution. You can imagine that we look through the directional light and it projects a 4096 by 4096 picture to the object. And when it hits an object behind that it will create a shadow and by doing that it will make something called a shadow map. It's quite straightforward. Obviously the size of the resolution will affect the performance of the game, so based on your needs and the platform you are developed to, you need to find the right resolution. Distance is simply defines the distance from the camera where Unity still renders shadows. If we increase it, as you can see the shadows resolution gets worse. And this is because Unity spreads the resolution of the shadow map along this length. So if you say too high, your shadows will be blurry. But to compensate that, Unity has a great feature called cascades. Right now we don't have any cascades, so the resolution evenly spread along the distance. When we enable it, it will simply use the shadow map resolution in intervals. What it means is the objects that are closer to the camera will have a higher resolution in the shadow map and the objects further away have a smaller resolution. It's pretty useful because if you think about it, most of the time we're focusing the close objects in our game. Also, we can have up to four cascades so it won't have a really noticeable line where the shadows are crisp and then suddenly blurry. Four cascades means Unity will split the distance based on the cascade ratios. For example, if we have 100 units of shadows and the first cascade is 10%, then Unity will render the highest resolution shadows in the first 10 meter, and on the second cascade is 20%. From 10 meter to 30 meter, it will calculate lower resolution shadows and so on. It's similar to scale in Lightmap when we bake the lighting. Depth and normal biases are for fighting artifacts. If the shadow distance is big, then Unity starts to show these artifacts and we can combat with these biases. In real life, if you start to play with it as a developer, you will see it through your eyes. So you know these, where to find and what are they. So always consider that the player won't see your game in detail as you see it. So let's set up a scene. Start with the settings. First go to the settings folder and select the URP renderer. Select the renderer path and set it to forward plus. While with forward rendering we have maximum 9 real time lights in our scene. With forward plus rendering we have unlimited. And you can select deferred as well but it's a bit performance heavy. If you make it for PC or console, use deferred. If you develop for mobile or VR, use forward or forward plus, but still be careful with the amount of lights. Then in Unity, head to the lighting settings and make sure real-time global illumination is checked. Then under the environment tab, we have a skybox as default. I'm going to change it to night sky. The asset links are in the description. And then, as you can see, the whole scene's lighting change. This is because Unity modifies the environmental lighting based on the skybox material. And you can play with its intensity to set something you like. I just leave it at 1 at the moment. Also, at the directional light, I decrease the intensity to 0 0.06. Then I drag the torch set to the scene and place it somewhere. Select the point light and change the mode to real time. And at the shadows option, select soft shadows. Then set the color you like and increase the intensity to about 4. Then flickering. What we want is to change the intensity over time randomly to have this flickering effect. So I found the public script on GitHub and you can find the link in the description. 
I add it to the torch and set the minimum intensity to 3 and the maximum to 6. With the smoothing we will play during play mode to find the right one, so press start. As you can see it does flickering and if we use the smooth slider for me I get a pretty good result around 7. So we'll have to place a bunch of these in the scene in different colors and light up our scene. See you in a bit. Finally we can use post processing to make it look a little better, I added some bloom to it and cranked up the intensity till I see those torches glowing. I also added this tone mapping and selected this ACES, it gives a filmic look but really dark so I just add a color adjustment to it and set the post exposure to 1.5 and it looks pretty good now. So in a nutshell that's real time lighting. I have a video about bake lighting where I discuss most of the settings of Unity's light baker if you are interested and as always hit that like button if you liked it, it really helps me out. Also if you want more of these kind of videos please subscribe to my channel and if you don't want to miss my future videos hit that notification bell. See you in the next video.